Using an Electret microphone, the Arduino can detect sounds and perform actions based on the input it receives. For example, the sound of hands clapping, a door closing, or someone's voice can all be used to trigger an Arduino's output. In this video, we'll take a look at what the output of the microphones look like. Then we'll build a circuit that responds to sound by lighting up an LED. Like a lot of other Arduino components, you can get electret microphones as a standalone unit or attached to a breakout board. These are Key's KY038 sound detector modules. This is the microphone capsule. Breakout boards usually come with a preamplifier built in. The preamplifier amplifies the microphone's audio signal to a level that the Arduino can work with. This board has an analog output and a digital output. This is the threshold potentiometer. It sets the sensitivity of the microphone. This is a standalone microphone. These are a little harder to set up. They don't have a preamplifier, so you have to connect one yourself. Electret microphones are polarized, so they have a positive pin and a ground pin. You can see the traces branching off of this pin. Those connected the casing, so this is the ground pin here. And this is the positive pin. Audio signals are an alternating current, similar to the current supplied by the electrical outlets in your home. However, while AC current in your home is a sine wave with a static frequency and wavelength, audio waves are highly variable. The frequency of an audio signal is directly related to the pitch of a sound. A higher frequency audio signal creates a higher pitch sound. and a lower frequency audio signal creates a lower pitch sound. The volume, or loudness of a sound, is directly related to the amplitude of the peaks. A higher amplitude audio signal creates a higher volume sound, and a lower amplitude audio signal creates a lower volume sound. Another factor called DC offset determines the voltage at the waveform center. The audio signal swings up and down around the DC offset voltage. Now let's see what the raw signal from the microphone looks like without a preamplifier. I'm connecting a standalone mic to the Arduino like this. The ground pin of the mic connects to the ground pin of the Arduino. The positive pin of the mic connects to 5 volts via a 10 kilo ohm resistor. The signal of the microphone comes from the positive pin and connects to analog pin A0. Since Electrite microphones output an AC signal that fluctuates up and down, we can't just use the analog read function to read it. We have to do a few extra things. Here's the sketch. First we declare a variable for the microphone's input pin and set it equal to the analog pin 0. Then we initialize the serial monitor. To capture the fluctuating audio signal, we'll take a series of analog reads from the microphone pin. Then we'll calculate the minimum and maximum values measured in that series of analog reads. Then we'll calculate the difference, or delta, between the minimum and maximum values. The value of the delta will give us an idea of the volume of sound detected by the microphone. A smaller delta corresponds to a smaller amplitude in the audio waveform, and thus a quieter sound. A larger delta corresponds to a larger amplitude waveform, and a louder sound. Here in the loop section, we start by declaring a variable called mn which will store the minimum value of the analog reads. It's initially set equal to 1024. 
Then we declare a variable called mx, which will store the maximum analog read values. It's initially set equal to zero. Now we have a for statement. The condition of the for statement creates a loop that runs 10,000 times before exiting. Each time the loop iterates, an analog read is taken from the microphone pin and stored in the local variable val. After each analog read, we calculate the minimum and maximum values measured within those 10,000 analog reads. We haven't seen the min and max functions yet, but they're pretty simple. The min function takes two parameters and returns the one with the smallest value. In this case, the parameters are variables, mn and val. For example, if mn equals 1 and val equals 5, the min function will return a 1, since it's smaller than 5. The max function works the same way, but returns the larger of the two parameters. So if mx is larger than val, it will return mx. If val is larger than mx, it will return val. So how does this for loop return the min and max analog read values over a series of 10,000 reads? The first time through the loop, mn is set equal to 1024, and mx is set equal to zero. In the first iteration through the for loop, we take an analog read of the microphone pin and store the reading in val. Let's say it's 620. The min function compares 1024 to 620 and returns the smaller value. So 620 is now stored in the mn variable. Then the max function compares 0 to 620 and returns the higher value. So now 620 is stored in the mx variable. Now the for loop iterates a second time. Another analog read is taken from the microphone pin and stored in the val variable. Let's say now it's 340. The min function now compares 620 to 340 and returns the smaller value. So this time 340 is stored in the mn variable. When the max function is executed, it compares 620 to 340 and returns the higher value. This time 620 is still higher than 340, so the value stored in mx is still 620. This process repeats until the 10,000th iteration, at which point it exits the loop with the highest and lowest analog read values stored in mx and mn. To get the delta, or difference between the highest and lowest readings, we simply subtract mx from mn. After that, we can print min, max, and delta to the serial monitor. All right, let's see what we get. I have my microphone connected to the Arduino. Now take a look at the min and max values. They're right around 545 or so. In this case, 545 corresponds to a voltage level around 2.5 volts. So the DC offset of the circuit is about 2.5 volts. Now look what happens when I knock the table. Let me stop the auto scroll real quick. When that knock sound occurred, the min value decreased and the max value increased. Also, the delta spiked a bit too. This is an analog read value. With analog read values, we have a range from 0 to 1023 to work with. This delta is really small compared to the range of values we could be getting. That means this circuit isn't very sensitive. It'll be hard to pick up any sounds that aren't right next to the microphone. That's why we usually connect a preamplifier to electric microphones. With a preamp, we can get this delta up to around 700. That'll make the mic more sensitive so it can detect sounds from further away.
A preamplifier is a circuit that increases or amplifies a weak audio signal into a stronger one. One way to make a preamplifier is with one or more operational amplifiers, or op amps for short. Op amps are general purpose voltage amplifiers. They take a low voltage input signal and output a high voltage signal. I could do a whole video on op amps, but I just want to cover the basics here. If you want to learn more about them, there are tons of great articles online. One important aspect of op amps is the concept of gain. Gain is the level of amplification performed by the amplifier. It's the ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage. A gain of 1 would result in no amplification to the output signal. A gain of 10 would result in a tenfold amplification of the input signal. Gains are usually set anywhere from 1 up to about 100x. You can also get preamplifier chips to amplify the Electret microphone signal. These are a few common ones. I compared the popular LM386 amplifier to the LM358. The LM358 had a cleaner signal with less noise, so that's what I'm going to use here. You can build the preamplifier circuit following this schematic. Or you can use this wiring diagram. The gain of the circuit can be set by changing the value of this resistor. When the value is 100 kilo ohms, the gain is set at 100x which is the highest gain that LM358 can produce. So that will make the microphone pretty sensitive. You can lower the gain by using a smaller resistor. For example, a 47 kilo ohm resistor will set the gain at 47x. A 10 kilo ohm resistor will set the gain at 10x. Once you have the circuit built, let's go back to our min-max sketch from before and look at the output. This is the exact same sketch we used before. It outputs the microphone's min and max analog read values over a period of 10,000 samples. So I have the preamp circuit set up here. The output of the amp is connected to analog pin A0. You can see that the delta with just ambient noise is still pretty low. So the higher gain and sensitivity isn't creating a lot of noise. When I knock on the table, the delta jumps up to around 700. That's much better than what we were getting with the microphone without a preamp. This signal is going to be a lot better to work with. I was getting this to register a clap from about 15 feet away. Okay, now let's look at how to set up the breakout board style of microphones. I'll be using the Keys KY038 module. These are quite a bit easier to set up since they have the preamp built in. It uses an LM393 op amp. The module has four pins. The A0 pin carries the amplified analog audio output. G is for ground. The plus sign is VCC. and the D0 pin is the digital output. The digital output is low when the audio signal is below a certain threshold value, and high when the audio signal is above a certain threshold value. The threshold value can be changed by adjusting the potentiometer on the board. Turning the screw clockwise decreases the threshold and makes the mic more sensitive. Turning it counterclockwise increases the threshold and makes the mic less sensitive. Connect the microphone module to the Arduino like this. Pin A0 on the mic connects to analog pin A0 on the Arduino. G connects to ground, and positive connects to 5 volts. The D0 pin of the mic connects to digital pin 1 on the Arduino. Let's start by making an LED switching circuit that responds to the digital signal from the microphone. 
I have an LED connected to digital pin 10 via a current limiting resistor. The other side of the LED is connected to ground. In the sketch, we're going to take a digital read from the microphone's digital pin. If the reading is high, we'll digital write a high value to the LED. It's pretty simple. Up at the top, we declare variables for the microphone pin and LED pin. We need another variable called state to store the high and low values read from the mic's digital pin. In the setup, we initialize the LED pin as an output and the microphone pin as an input. In the loop, we first take a digital read from the microphone pin and store that reading in the state variable. Then we have an if else statement that says, if the microphone pin state is high, then digital write the LED pin high and delay for one second. Otherwise, digital write the LED pin low. Let's check it out. Here's the microphone module and an LED connected to the Arduino. When I knock on the table, the LED lights up. Okay, good, so it's working as expected. Now let's look at how to trigger an LED with the microphone's analog signal. In this sketch, the Arduino will calculate the min, max, and delta values from a series of analog reads of the microphone. We'll use the delta value to trigger a digital write to the LED pin. First, we declare our microphone and LED pin variables. When adjusting the sensitivity, it helps to print the delta values to the serial monitor. So we'll initialize that. Then we set the LED pin as an output. In the loop, we have variables for min and max. Then we have the for loop that takes a bunch of reads and calculates the min and max analog read values from the microphone pin. In the preamplifier sketch we saw earlier, we performed 10,000 iterations of the for loop. But that many cycles creates a delay in how the LED responds. So I decrease this to 100, which still works fine. Here we calculate the delta, just like before. Then we print delta to the serial monitor. Now we have the if statement that controls when the LED lights up. If delta is greater than 200, then we digital write the LED pin high and delay for one second. Otherwise, we write the LED pin low. This number sets the threshold that triggers the LED. A lower threshold will make the LED turn on at a lower sound level. And a higher threshold will make the LED turn on at a higher sound level. Let's see if I can get the LED to light up by knocking on the table. Yep, there it goes. You can play around with the threshold to get the mic to respond to different types of sounds. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at some simple motion sensors that will let you detect tilt and vibration. The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. 
Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture and displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit, and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder.